Hi, this is Ken Boyd with the Accounting Accidentally website. And this is the last in a series of three videos that explains the 20 most interesting facts in business. So I'm going to scroll down to where I left off. And where I'm going to pick up is unusual facts about the Standard & Poor's 500 index. Seeking Alpha is a great site that I recommend for the stock market. Points out some unusual facts. Standard & Poor's happens to be an index of 500 stocks that reflect the returns of the broad market and a lot of big mutual funds, particularly index funds, follow the Standard & Poor's 500. First of all, how did Wall Street start? Well, Wall Street itself in New York was laid out behind a 12-foot high wooden stockade in lower Manhattan in 1685. Pretty amazing it was that many years ago. Stockade was built to protect Dutch settlers from British and Native American attacks. So the same location of Wall Street that we have now is in that same place where a wooden stockade was. You must own a seat on the New York Stock Exchange to trade stocks. The highest price as of this writing was $2.6 million approximately in 1999 when the market was at a high point before the 2001 crash. Lowest price paid $4,000 in 1876, which I believe was around the time of a recession. We have a competitor to the New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, 1971. And this is where over-the-counter OTC stocks trade. NASDAQ, most people have forgotten, stands for the National Association of Security Quotations. A lot of the early tech stocks went to this exchange, including Microsoft, MSFT is the ticker symbol. Stock symbols for the NASDAQ originally started off with four or more characters, which is why you see MSFT for Microsoft. We then shift to unusual accounting facts, and these are issues that I see both business people and investors get wrong for years. Everybody, uh, may get interest and dividend income, and you may get gains and losses on stocks, but the gains and losses from investments on a tax return may be different from what we call realized gains and losses. First of all, you have to have a buy and a sell transaction to generate a realized gain or loss, realized. So if you buy IBM at $30 a share and sell it for 50, you have a realized gain, a buy and a sell of $20 a share. However, not all realized gains are recognized on your tax return. It's an important difference that you need to understand. They can be different. Land it does not depreciate. Buildings and other assets do. Land does not. Interesting fact, I wrote another article on the accounting accidentally side about airlines. And one of the interesting points with airlines is that many airlines earn up to 50% of their income from selling blocks of miles to credit card companies. One of the biggest uh, sites on the internet for internet traffic in the business world are companies that review credit card companies. So it's a huge part of how airlines make money. And finally, you can increase earnings per share without necessarily generating higher profits because the basic formula is earnings available to common shareholders divided by weighted average common shares outstanding. If you buy back some shares, you can lower the share common stock shares outstanding and you can earn less money per share outstanding. You can essentially earn more money for the same dollar amount of earnings. So that's a wrap up of my interesting business facts. Remember when I scroll to the top here, accounting accidentally has about at this time over 400 YouTube videos. The blog has 300 posts. You'll see that I'm starting to write reviews on software. As of the date of this recording, there's free downloads. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.